Hello and welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, welcome back to Cornwall, welcome back to a beautiful summer's day and welcome back to a road not populated by tourists. Yep, I am once again out foraging for food, but I've decided to come the pretty route because if I do this, hopefully we can get to the store without getting run off the road because if you watch the last vlog, it got a little bit wacky races with much less Penelope pit stop and much more people trying to drive into the side of the car, which is something that I thought would stop. I thought it would end after I got off the motorbike. After I switched the motorbike for a car, I thought, ah, people will see two tons of hybrid coming along the road. It is bright silver. It is, it is like the eye of sour. No, no, no. Everyone just wants to drive into it because it's a pretty car. And I'm like, I understand, I understand, but could you not? So yeah, out foraging for food. And I thought, well, since I'm out on the roads, I'll do a vlog because that is the most efficient way of doing this. If I can save a little bit of fuel by not driving around the beautiful Cornish lanes, um, just recording if I can do something as well, then I may as well do it. But speaking of being efficient, I am looking for a new job. I am looking for a new job because the one that I'm at currently, I've been there for seven years. Uh, nearly eight years. Wow. But yeah, about seven and a half years. I've been doing. I've been doing YouTube for nearly. Oh wow, that road is completely blocked. There's a police car down there. That's the main road into Cornwall, by the way. Um, yeah, I've been doing YouTube for nearly nine years, and the previous job that I had, I was a, a, a computer technician, and I did that for twelve years. So it's not as if I just turn up at a place and then bail very quickly. Uh, we got a tractor here. I'm gonna follow this lad over. Just, there we go. Nice, that was, that was very nice. Nice maneuver in front of the police car. No, he was, he was fine, we had plenty of space. Uh, yeah, looking for a new job. Um, it's a shame because I really do like the place that I work at now. I really, really do like it. I do get to use Photoshop every day, which is an Adobe product, so I use Photoshop during the day for eight hours when I'm at work, um, retouching images. So we do all of the all of the opening of eyes and removing of reflections on glasses. We add people into images. We we'll remove people from images who shouldn't have been there. We change backgrounds. We uh, we do a lot of stuff. Um, I know one of the lads in the office was adding helicopters to a shot um, last week. So yeah, they're uh, stitching images together from like people on staging. So we have 200, 300 or 600 people on staging and the, the, the school had 1,200 people. Two, two photographs of the staging and one in the background, stitch it all together to, to make it look like it was never edited. A beautiful unedited image that I spent three and a half hours stitching together. And sometimes, sometimes the photographer goes full pants on head and forgets what they're doing. And then you spend 12 hours stitching an image together because, well, they took it and they took so many different parts and you're just like, oh no, I need the IKEA instructions to solve this one. But it's good, it's interesting. Um, let's get across here, level crossing. Cool. Excellent uh, Ukrainian flag. Nice. Cyclists, even better. Let's see if we can go past these lads without Give them plenty of space. There we go. Full space. There we go. Um, yeah, so the, the job is super interesting. I, I really do like it. I do like that. And then, of course, you come home from work and it's the evening and then you jump on uh, Adobe Premiere. So you go from Photoshop to Premiere and it is... Oh, hello. <laughs> he was in the middle of the road. Uh, you go from Adobe to uh, Photoshop to Premiere, and it's, yeah, it's much of a muchness, like the programs feel similar, um, but one is editing photographs, the other is editing images, and I like it. I, I do like uh, having the ability to um, just to hop on to either or. It's good. Um, but the trouble is that, well, YouTube is not really paid until recently because uh, I put up a donation button and some of you guys have actually been 
donating, which is excellent. I mean, thank you, absolutely. Um, from the bottom of my heart, that is uh, a beautiful thing to do. Uh, you don't have to, of course, but it does help to pay the electricity bill, uh, which the computer munches through electricity like Pac-Man through, um, I guess, what are those little white dots called? Pills? I guess so. Yeah, but you get the, you get the idea. Um, but yeah, work has, uh, work has decided to go, and it's my favorite quote uh, by someone who also works there. They've gone full communist and put everyone on minimum wage because they could. Yeah, we were, up, we were being underpaid for a while um, during the lockdown. And then what they did is they went, oh, oh, we haven't, we haven't changed your wages for three years. How about we uh, give you a pay rise, but only up to minimum wage? And we were like, you what, mate? So I am earning less now than I did in 2007. Less now, as this video is being recorded, than I did in 2007. And that's one of the reasons I cannot get a, a house or a flat. I can't even buy a caravan. Where are these people going? I don't know. Give them plenty of space and go past slowly. I mean, they seem to be having a fun time on their push bikes. Yeah, it's, it's mad, 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 mad world that we live in. So I've been up on the uh, recruitment sites and I've been like, oh, 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 you have 12 years as a technician. You did website design, you did disaster recovery. I did, uh, I worked on the management information system and a financial management uh, system, FMS and um, SIMS. Uh, I think it was Bromcom before that, actually. Um, I've set up databases, I've set up web servers, uh, PHP and uh, CSS and things. Uh, not CSS, what am I talking about? PHP and uh, MySQL. And just Microsoft SQL, actually. Um, yeah, I've done so much stuff. And then the, the photo editing and everything. But when it comes to, when it comes to jobs, you get two types on the internet. So I've been, I've been looking around and there's a lot for, uh, there's a lot for restaurants. There's a lot for uh, places like, so you've got restaurants, you've got hotels, you've got uh, supermarkets, the supermarché. And it's really interesting because, let's just give that guy some space. Um, it's really interesting because they're not being paid a lot like super not a lot but they're being paid more than i am so all these jobs you would have thought were kind of your basic jobs and these are jobs that i did when i left college or in fact when i was in college i was working in a supermarket i was on the twilight shift stacking shelves um, and then i was a silver service waiter so i was i was doing waiting and that was fun um, for a bit. In fact, that was where the story of the cat comes from. Oh, nice. We can go this way. There we go. Let the postman go. Postman knocks twice. Um, yeah, I was, uh, I was a silver service waiter and it was a split shift. So you did morning service and evening service because it was in a, uh, a hotel. And basically what I, what I was doing, it was after morning service and uh, all the guests had, had left the restaurant and I was vacuuming. So we were cleaning up and I was doing the vacuuming. I was using an old hoover with a cloth bag and had the, the beater brush that was underneath the hoover that was really just battering the carpet. It genuinely was a hoover with the light on the front of it. I mean, it made all the noise. It could wake the dead. It was impressive. Um, and there was a cat and he was on a chair in the hallway uh, just outside the restaurant and I was like oh cat in the hallway yes please I love cats so I was like I love cats and I went over to the cat and I held my hand out and he looked at my hand and he gave it a little sniff because if you want to make friends with a cat hold your hand out hold your hand out and let the cat come to you and the first thing the cat should do is give it a little sniff because cats remember scent. Um, cats remember scent, 
they are very long sighted so if you put your hand in front of its face it can't focus on your hand and what it will do is it's just a big blurry object that's coming directly towards it it's likely to freak out and scratch you um, so yeah just hold your hand out let the cat come to you it will give you a little sniff and then it will be like oh I like you and then uh, you can give him some pets which is what I did it's what I always do and I, so I gave him some pets and then I stood up and turned around and the entire the entire uh, waiting staff were behind me in a doorway just watching and waiting and they were like he didn't do it didn't do what he didn't scratch you he scratches everyone it's like oh well thanks for the warning <laughs> but um yeah, no, it, that was that was one of the funnest things. So I love the cat. Um, I wasn't there for too long. I was only covering like maternity, uh, someone's maternity leave. And I think afterwards, I oh, what did I do as a job after that? I did KP for a while. I was a kitchen porter. I uh, did not like that, but it was a thing. Um, let me, we're clear. Yep. So I was a kitchen porter for a while. Um, and then I got a job in an internet cafe and that was kind of my first like serious job I guess the internet cafe was interesting because uh, it was a time when internet cafes could exist so people would come in and they would they would ask to either go on the internet uh, in which case you showed them to a machine they sat down and you, you could uh, serve them a, a tea or a coffee and we had like little like chocolate bars and stuff. It wasn't like a full cafe. We didn't do sandwiches and things. Um, and we had the gaming area as well. And that was literally just a LAN. And it was the time of things like, um, oh, it was Counter-Strike. It was like original Counter-Strike, not even Counter-Strike Source, just like original Counter-Strike, an original day of defeat. And there were like regulars that would come in and jump on the LAN and we had Unreal Tournament and uh, during, during lunch times what would happen is uh, the owner and his friends would come in and then it would be me and we would all get together and have a bit of an Unreal Tournament sesh which is great, I loved it but the crazy thing is that internet cafe was running off ISDN it was 128 kilobytes kilobytes for the whole thing um, yeah, no, it was absolutely 100% crazy. But I, I actually really like those times. And what would happen is people would come in with a busted ass computer and they would be like, hey, I've got a busted ass computer. Can you fix my busted ass computer? And I would be like, I love computers. I love computers and cats. Sure, I'll give you a busted ass computer a look. So I gave the busted ass computer a look and it turned out that quite often, yeah, you can just fix it. You pull off the side panel and it was full of dust or spiders. One time it was full of spiders. And uh, yeah, I, I pulled off the side and was like, this computer is not powering up. What was the problem? Yeah, spiders on the motherboard. It was, uh, that was a unique experience. <laughs> I, was, I was not 100%, uh, I'd never seen that before. So. This place is lovely. We've been through here before, but we came through here during the winter about a year ago. Or maybe it was September. It certainly wasn't sunny like this. Oh, I love, I, I, I really do wanna. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I really do wanna buy, I so badly wanna buy a house. But Mun's ain't there. So yeah, we would do that. We would, I'd fix a bunch of stuff. I basically opened and closed for that place because the owner was like, oh, I'm going to go down the pub. So the owner went down the pub and I just ran it for a bit. Did all the finances and everything, but it wasn't a long-term thing. And after that, I got a job at the school, which was more of a career. So we started off with like a hand, I think we had like three or four servers. And by the time I left, we had like 20, like both physical and virtual machines. We had so much stuff went into that place. Uh, I put in the Wi-Fi. I put in the Wi-Fi system. I was crawling through the loft space and running cables everywhere for the Wi-Fi system for the school. It was a school. IT technician in the school. Um, yeah, that was fun. I, I really did enjoy that. But 12 years was a little too long, and I left. When I left, I was just like, I have no idea what I need to do, but I'm going to leave. So I handed in my 
uh, handed in my notice, and then I got a call on the Friday as I left. Hey, your mum says you get in Photoshop. Do you want to come and show us your skills? And I turned up on the Monday at the place where I work and uh, went through some basic training stuff. I was left alone for most of it, and they came back and they're like, oh, how, how far have you got? And I've done, I'm like, I've done all of this. And they're like, oh, 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 buddy. When can you start? And I was like, how about tomorrow? <laughs> because I don't have a job. So yeah, I was out of work for one day. Well, unless you count the training, in which case I was out of work for no days in the last uh, 19 years. Whoa, no, it's not that long. No, that can't be true. No, 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 no. So ultimately, what do I want to do? That is an excellent question. I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. I don't know if there's anything... Uh, I don't know what's out there. I've been looking. So there's been jobs in hotels and, and uh, uh, restaurants and supermarkets. They, that is basically Cornwall. Uh, and that is, if you're the youth of Cornwall, congratulations. Unless you know someone, you're not going to get a job uh, of much interest. Um, so yeah, I, I did look, and there's the like phlebotomy. I had to look that one up. Phlebotomy is is drawing fluids from patients. There's quite a lot of adverts for that on the internet, um, and you can imagine that some people just have things like diabetes, and some people have things that are quite infectious, and some people have things that are, they don't even know what they have. So you're just like, okay, okay. Um, yeah, I'm not I'm not entirely too sure. So, um, but that's all like minimum wage as well. I, I wouldn't do it. It's kind of kind of dangerous. If you're gonna do a job which puts you in harm's way, you want more than minimum wage. I love these cottages. Um, so yeah, what what do I do? Well, going to Sweden was a bit of an eye opener. I do have a European passport. I am a dual national, both Great Britain with the United Kingdom and uh, the Republic of Ireland. And the Pro Republic of Ireland is still in the EU, which means that when we went to Sweden I used my Irish passport and we just walked in. Everyone else in the party, everyone else in the group who had British passports needed to get a visa stamped on their passport and they got questioned uh, who are you? What are you doing? All this sort of stuff. Why are you here? And there's a big bag in the road. Huh. I'm gonna go around that. Is it still in the road? Yeah. Weird. You don't know. It could be full of bricks or kittens or anything. I mean, it's not full of kittens. It's moving around, so... But it's definitely from the building site. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I am a, a European citizen. And mum said, no, 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 your residency, you, you, you reside in the UK, you're not European. And I'm like, yeah, I am. <laughs> the passport says that I am a, a, a citizen of Ireland. And I did get that before Brexit, before anyone says, uh, I became, um, I became um, uh, a citizen, an Irish citizen uh, way before Brexit was even contemplated just because it was uh, dad was born over there I went to school in Clontarf and uh, we went over to visit the old house and the old school and we went to look at Dublin and places like that and then I was like yeah this is cool and he's like you can become a citizen and I was like okay so I did that's that story and it's kind of short um, but yeah it's nice to have the European passport just to walk through the Eurozone without being questioned about it. just just walk in, just show you your EU passport. But it does mean I can probably go to EU and work. So the question is, do I want to stay in Cornwall? Which is beautiful, it's like no other part of the United Kingdom. Uh, I should imagine Scotland is perhaps similar. Um, and I would contemplate Scotland, I would absolutely contemplate Scotland. Uh, I've had dreams about living around the Kent area like that sort of style of housing and houses but not it's weird it's a weird one 
Um, I don't know if it's something that would ever, uh, would ever unfold. I, I don't know. Or I could just move to Germany. Probably not France, but yeah, Germany, um, any of the Scandinavian countries seem like an interesting... I could move to a Scandinavian country. Uh, I mean, I, I do have a lot of the prerequisites in terms of finances and things, uh, even though, you know, work's not great. Um, just just eat beans. I mean, what, what can you do? And then the car, you, people might say, yeah, the car's really expensive. Yeah, it was. Inheritance. Was it a good way to spend inheritance? Well, it was a way to get me off a motorbike and to, uh, to get into a hybrid was a good idea. Now, I mean, fuel is, it, it sips fuel. It does sip fuel. I mean, you can see the, the bars are fairly full along here and it re regains energy quite a lot. It's a, it's a good motor to have in a time when petrol is expensive. So as much as it cost initially to buy, it's, uh, it's doing work for itself when it comes to fueling it and maintaining it. Um, so yeah, it's, it swings and roundabouts with this one. I do like this car though. I mean, it had to be special in order to get me off of a motorbike, but my spine, my neck, uh, my back, my, no, we're not gonna go there. Uh, but yeah, it, it was beginning to take its toll on my skeletal system riding a motorbike for hundreds of miles through winter weather and rain and everything. The guy in the learner has stopped, but I can't go anywhere because the learner needs to go. Sorry lads, we're kind of stuffed up here. So the guy in the red car is a learner. Um, fair enough, we all had to learn sometime and it doesn't matter, I mean, as long as we're cruising slowly, what's actually happening is we are we are sipping fuel once more. So yeah, I don't mind that. Uh, where were we? Yeah, yeah. So I, I can move to other countries. If I was going to move from Cornwall to anywhere, I could move from Cornwall to literally anywhere. But I don't know. I just I don't know. One of the biggest players in this is anxiety. Uh, if I do commit to something, then there's going to be huge change and a huge upheaval and a huge amount of planning and it, it becomes big and I don't like it when things become big. The ocean is big and I don't like the ocean. Um, I don't like being on boats. I'll tolerate being on a boat because I will, but yeah, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure. We'll find some, something we'll have to give because I can't stay where I am. I can't stay living where I am forever. Um, that'll probably carry on for maybe a couple more years, but eventually, eventually we'll just be priced out. I have a feeling we'll be priced out. Um, the owners are really lovely, but there is an economy and they've got to work to the economy. Um, and, I, I will not be moving forward with my life if I carry on working for minimum wage. It is exploitative. It is exploiting the workforce. Um, yeah, and I am solo. I'm, I'm, I'm just me. Just me on this crazy, mad, 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 mad world. But anyway, um, yeah, we are approaching Penzance from a completely different, like, a complete, completely different direction. I'm keeping an eye on the time. I do know that every half an hour that that camera stops, saves the files, and then it will, uh, so it'll save the files, and then it will um, carry on, but there'll be like a 20 second gap between the, the files, and I think we started off at 22, 52. Yeah, I think about now, the camera is probably resetting. Excellent. So I'll need to substitute whatever the footage was with footage out of the side of the car in order to patch it together. This is something you only learn when you come across these problems. So yeah, while a lot of jobs might require a lot of skills and they might ask for degrees and things, a lot of the skill that you get is simply 
stuff that you learn when you're doing it. And for YouTube and for Photoshop and for computers and everything, a lot of those skills I learned when I was just doing them, which is one of the best ways to be. Be inquisitive. Be inquisitive and be open-minded. And I love that little, little pine forest there. So trees in Cornwall are something of a premium beyond this point. So you go beyond uh, Penzance and everything becomes a lot windswept and there's a lot less trees and a lot more bare fields. Uh, so when you do see trees like this, you go, wow, it's amazing. It kind of reminds me of places like, um, like Ascot and, and areas around there where you've got the Queen's Forest. I do like those areas. So yes, we are now coming up to Roundabout, which is familiar and we will link up to our chosen foraging location. Is it the chosen foraging location if you just happen to be not recording a vlog? No. No, 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 no. If I'm not recording a vlog, I'll just go to whatever Supermarge, Supermarge happens to be the closest for un baguette, uh, le fromage, and, well, not Jacques Cousteau, because I don't eat fish, but you know what I mean. And you've got to be a little bit careful. So far we've had, uh, we've been quite lucky with tourism and tourists, uh, but apparently last week a tourist went along, not this bit, but the next bit, in the wrong direction. So this is like a freeway, it's two lanes and two lanes going in opposite directions. And the tourist got confused at the other section and started going the wrong way um, up the eastern green bit near the supermarket. And there's a, there's a good photograph of it on Facebook. And the tourist is absolutely confused and all the cars are just driving like towards them and it's just like, I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, if I have any advice for tourists, the train is quite good, although it will be ramo at this time of year. If you don't have kids and you want to come to Cornwall, uh, I would leave it until after the school summer holidays. Just come down when the kids are all back at school. Um, September is very nice for that. The sea has had a chance to warm up and the weather usually is quite good. Normally in August it rains a lot, so uh, we're fortunate to have the sun. Yeah, Cornwall is lovely. Would I swap it out for anything else? God, I did love Sweden. I did, I loved Sweden. I, I so, so much love Sweden, but maybe it was because of the people I was with. I don't know. Uh, fuel, our oh, fuel's dropped again as well, nice. Still very expensive though, and I think it'll remain expensive. So let's go. All right, well, I'll tell you what, since we're nearly at our destination, I will leave it there for the time being. If you like these vlogs, definitely, definitely leave a little like because that helps the video. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe because subscriptions really do help the channel uh, in ways that I cannot describe. Um, and YouTube just loves subscribers. Um, if you want notifications, click the little bell. If you don't want notifications, don't click the bell. You are your own person and uh, it's very important to control your inbox. And I'll tell you what, I'll catch you next time. <laughs>